In this explainer video, I'm going to talk to you more about uncertainty, how to find the uncertainty and how to calculate percentage error, which is a really important math skill for you A-level biology students. So first of all, what is an uncertainty? So every piece of apparatus you use in a practical, there is an element of uncertainty with any measurement you make, right? And to find the uncertainty of a piece of apparatus or measuring equipment, it's always going to be plus or minus half of the smallest division. Okay, so let's look at two really easy examples. If you're measuring um, a liquid with a pipette, this pipette has graduations that are 0 0.1 centimetre cubed volume measurements. So that's the smallest graduation, right? That's the smallest division on the piece of equipment. So when you measure using that pipette, the uncertainty is going to be half of that smallest division. Therefore, the uncertainty using this pipette would be plus or minus 0 0.05 centimetres cubed. Another example, we've got a measuring cylinder. Now, the measuring cylinder has two millilitre graduations on it. So the smallest division marked on that measuring cylinder is two millimetres. The uncertainty is going to be plus or minus half of that smallest division. So the uncertainty here is plus or minus one millilitre. Now, they're really easy because with a pipette, with a measuring cylinder, with a beaker, with a gas syringe, with all of these things, you're just making one judgment. You're just taking one measurement, right? But what if you're using a ruler to measure the length of something? Now, when you use a ruler, yeah, there are actually two judgments that you're making every time you measure something with a ruler because you're lining up the zero and that's where you start to measure from and then you're measuring the length as well at this end. So you're making two judgments and that means you're going to have two uncertainties. You're going to have the uncertainty where you lined up the zero at this end and the uncertainty where you actually read off the measurement of your object at this end. So we need to add the uncertainties together. Now with a typical ruler, the smallest division is usually one millimeter, right? That's the smallest division or the smallest graduation that you can see on a typical ruler in your pencil case. Now, if that's the smallest division, the uncertainty is plus or minus half of the smallest division. So the uncertainty is 0 0.5 millimetres, but we need to times it by two because we've got that uncertainty here where we made our first judgment and we've got that uncertainty again here where we made our second judgment. So we actually need to double that. So the uncertainty of the ruler is actually one millimetre. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, how can you reduce this uncertainty? Well, you need to use a piece of apparatus that has smaller graduations or smaller divisions. It's a bit like you're saying a smaller or a higher resolution, isn't it? A higher resolution. But what the mark scheme will want you to say is use a piece of apparatus that has smaller graduations or smaller divisions. For example, instead of using a beaker, I don't know. I mean, this would be a really bad beaker to use. This beaker, the smallest division is 50, like 50 millilitres, right? So the uncertainty there would be 25 millilitres. Instead of using that, maybe use our measuring cylinder. Obviously, it does depend on the volume that you need to measure, but you really want to avoid using apparatus that has massive intervals between its divisions because the uncertainty is going to be massive. If you use a piece of apparatus that has much smaller divisions or smaller intervals, smaller graduations, the uncertainty is obviously going to be much smaller. So that's how you would reduce the uncertainty. Let's get on to percentage error before I forget. The way to calculate percentage error, also known as percentage uncertainty, is to take your uncertainty. So let's do this example here. With my measuring cylinder, it had two millilitre graduations, plus or minus half of that smallest division. This was my uncertainty. I'm going to take my uncertainty, which was one, and I'm going to divide it by the quantity I measured with that piece of apparatus. So if my uncertainty was one, and let's say I was measuring 
10 centimetres cubed or should change that to millilitres, shouldn't I? Because I had millilitres here. Obviously, we can't measure in different units. My uncertainty was one and I measured a volume of 10 millilitres with that measuring cylinder. I would do one over 10. So the uncertainty divided by the quantity measured. And then I would multiply that by 100. Now, you should be able to do that in your head, really. But here we go. Don't want to get it wrong on YouTube. OK. No, it's not. I was like, that's not right. What was my calculator doing? One divided by 10 is 0 0.1, obviously. Times it by 100 is 10, obviously. I don't know what I did then, guys, but please accept my apologies. Um, so the percentage uncertainty would be 10 percent. It's the uncertainty divided by the quantity measured times 100 to get it a percentage, 10 percent. Let's do one more with this example. This was the uncertainty of using our pipette, right? And when we use the pipette, we measured a volume of two centimetres cubed. So we do the uncertainty divided by the volume that we measured in this case, which was two. Let's hope my calculator doesn't give me an incorrect answer. So 0 0.05 divided by two, and then multiply that by 100. And that gives me a percentage of 2.5%. That's my percentage uncertainty or my percentage error. Now, I have also seen questions where you have to add uncertainties together. Let me see if I can just make up a little example on the spot in case that comes up in your exam. So let's say you're using a pipette and your pipette has an uncertainty of 0 0.05 centimetres cubed. They're telling you that's the uncertainty. If they don't, if they just tell you the smallest division, remember to just half it to get the uncertainty. But here I'm going to tell you the uncertainty and I'm going to tell you that with that pipette, we measured one centimetres cubed. But let's imagine you were going to use that pipette with that uncertainty to measure that volume. And you were going to mix that with another liquid that you had measured using a different piece of apparatus. So let's imagine that the other liquid was measured with a measuring cylinder. And that measuring cylinder had an uncertainty of two centimetres cubed. And maybe with that measuring cylinder, we had measured 10 centimetres cubed. And we're going to mix these two solutions together. So how would we go about working out the percentage uncertainty? Well, what we're going to do is add our uncertainties together and add our quantities measured together. So on the top, we're going to add the uncertainty of the pipette and the uncertainty of the measuring cylinder, um, which gives us 2.05. And then on the bottom, we're going to add together the quantities that we measured. So we measured one centimetre cube with the pipette and we measured 10 centimetre cube with the measuring cylinder. That's a total quantity measured of 11 centimetres cubed. So we're doing exactly the same as before, right? But this time we've got two uncertainties and two separate quantities measured. So add together your uncertainties on the top, add together your quantities measured on the bottom. And I've totally made this question up, so I've got no idea what we're going to get. But the uncertainties when added together was 2.05. The quantities when added together were 11. And then I can multiply that by 100. And my percentage uncertainty is 18 0.6%. And that's it. I hope you found those examples useful and I hope you feel like you understand uncertainty and percentage error a little bit better.